hang separately, or we can hang together and try to pursue a strategy that looks at um, a balanced approach to the budget. Uh, one that recognizes that we don't have as much money that, as we did, although temporarily, within a year or 18 months, we should be back at pre-recessionary level. One that says, it's all right to review programs and find efficiencies, and there might be a lot of ways to do things better. And I think a lot of you have been involved in those conversations about ways to do things better that can save money and improve services for individuals <coughs> and our economy. Um, but that we also need to look at um, uh, raising revenue, closing tax loopholes, and ending special interest tax breaks that can help get us through this bad budget cycle. So um, the other thing that we need to do moving forward is to communicate the impact of the cuts. What we've heard a lot is that um, people want to cut government, want to cut the size of government. Well, now we know what cutting government is. It isn't cutting um, people who work in offices, although that's also a part of this budget. We can talk about that in a moment. Um, but it's cutting um, things that individuals need, whether that's enforcement, or it is closing hospitals, or it's um, uh, eliminating teachers and consolidating classes and ending full day kindergarten. Those are, the, those are the consequences of, of um, cutting government. Uh, we have a number of options in terms of trying to bring some balance back to this budget. And again, one of the, one of the themes that I think we really want to talk about is shared sacrifice. There is not shared sacrifice in this budget. There is not shared sacrifice in this budget. Um, Local governments and school districts and counties are going to have to cut services or they are going to have to raise taxes. And so when we talk about a budget that doesn't include any, ta any new taxes, really what we have is a budget that shifts responsibility, shifts costs from the state to local governments and they will have to respond by raising taxes. So the, the question is not whether you address revenue, it's where you address revenue. <laughs> and we obviously have some options here. Um, the, the drilling tax and the Marcella Shale, this is an old slide, we're now up to like $152 million. Um, and the Marcella Shale, uh, that is simply funds that we've left on the table by not having the, the, the drilling tax. Um, again, we're the only ones. There's drilling going on in all of the states that have taxes. And yes, we would like to be like Texas. <laughs> Texas has a drilling tax. They have a business tax, they have property taxes on, on gas drilling. So um, we can, the evidence is just so ample, we can have a thriving gas industry um, and one that helps with and a tax and, and can generate revenue and support the environmental protection necessary to make that gas drilling something that doesn't create or minimizes long-term environmental and helps deal with the local impacts in, in local communities. <coughs> so we have choices. Uh, we could restore the cuts to Penn State and community colleges with a, with a gas drilling tax. If we eliminated the tobacco loophole that we have had forever, we can restore the human services development funds and we could restore literacy programs. If we end bonus depreciation, we could completely restore funds to the state system of higher education. Um, Mike talk a little bit about bonus depreciation. This, this is one that I really want you all to begin to talk about. Um, and bonus depreciation was included in the Federal Recovery Act. Um, there was a menu of options about things that stimulate the economy. Bonus depreciation was the lowest of all of them. It returns about 27 cents for every dollar spent on the federal level. So it was not a great idea on the federal level, but one that the federal government invested in. Um, it works at a federal level because the feds can borrow money to pay for the loss of revenue. It doesn't work on the state level because when you take $200 out of the state budget during a recession, you can't pay it back. And the way bonus appreciation works is the costs come up front and eventually you recover.
recover the cost down the road. The problem is we don't need that recovery down the road. We need the money now. It also doesn't work. It works on the federal level. Uh, it doesn't work on the state level because a company in Pennsylvania can take bonus depreciation for buying a piece of equipment and using it in Colorado, not in Pennsylvania. So it doesn't do very much to stimulate the economy here. Anyway, that's my rant on bonus depreciation. Um, the capital stock and franchise tax, another, you know, again, one of the reasons that um, we've seen, uh, I, frankly, where we've seen a reduction in revenue over the past 10 years has been that the General Assembly voted to eliminate the capital stock and franchise tax. It's about $1.5 billion. They never paid for it. Um, we're now at the very end of that. If we just, if we just delayed the next pay, piece of the phase out, um, we could pay for and restore funds to the University of Pittsburgh and Lincoln University. If we close the Delaware loophole, can I get some applause, please? <laughs> We could restore cuts in basic education and long-term care. Um, Governor Lincoln Chafee of, of uh, Rhode Island announced last week that Rhode Island will be the 24th state that will adopt combined reporting and close loopholes. More than half the states with corporate taxes um, have combined reporting. Um, most of the businesses in Pennsylvania, 97% of them, uh, the largest companies operate in states with combined reporting, so they're already doing it. There's no excuse. And then finally, one of our favorites, recapturing the Bush tax cuts. Temporarily, recapturing the Bush tax cuts. Um, there's, a, there's a way to um, um, change the tax rate for the capital gains in Pennsylvania that could recapture some of the, some of the funds that are going to the top 1% and 5% in Pennsylvania, would bring in about $330 million. Um, the, the top 5% um, of taxpayers in Pennsylvania are getting, through the extension of the Bush tax cuts, $4.3 billion in the fall. So that amount is enough to completely pay for Pennsylvania's budget gap and allow us to invest in the future. So what can you do? We've got a number of coalitions that we hope that you will get involved with. Um, we've got a clear plan moving forward to help talk about the impact of the cuts. Um, when you go out during the break, we'll, you'll see we've got posters and posters with postcards on them. Um, talking about what some of the impacts of these cuts will be, we urge you to take them, we urge you to get involved. Um, the Clear Coalition, Better Choices Coalition, the Southeastern Pennsylvania Budget Coalition, Greater Pittsburgh Nonprofit Partnership, all of these groups are working together on trying to advance a, um, a balanced approach to the budget. Uh, we'd urge you to get active and get engaged. Um, there are a variety of different activities that you're going to see over the next couple of months. There's a rally scheduled for May 3rd here at the Capitol. There'll be buses leaving from around the state. Um, and there, is there a website yet? There's a website. Clear, go to the CLEAR website to get information about that. You can sign up already for your place on the bus. Don't miss your seat on the bus. Um, together, I think we have the opportunity to bring some balance to the budget, um, to help inform this discussion, and to really make a difference. So we'll talk a little bit about, more about that today, and I'll stop and see if anybody has any questions. So thank you. And we, your test. Some of those reductions are um, elimination of currently vacant positions. About 400 of the positions, I mean 700 of them are in the Department of Public Welfare, and about 400 of them are in the forensic unit at the state hospital in Norristown. Um, there's a proposal that would privatize some of those uh, positions and have a private sector company come in and run that. I don't know if there's an increase um, expenditure for that um, allocated or, or reflected anywhere in the budget. Good. One, one comment. Uh, I don't think uh, communicating uh, the impact of the cut by itself is sufficient. The 
really important. Uh, but uh, we're being told we have to do it. We don't have a choice. Uh, and I was really impressed a year ago when I heard Mike uh, say that uh, you need to keep in context that Pennsylvania, I think he said, had the lowest number of state employees per population in any other state, which gives you the idea that there's not a lot of money. I wondered if that's still true, given the amount of budget cutting that's been going on around the country. But where do we rank in terms of size of government in any way that can help us uh, explain why uh, it's uh, we're not a bloated uh, a government in Pennsylvania? That's a good point. I haven't looked at you looked at new numbers on that? Still true. Yeah. Still true. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mark. <laughs> Pennsylvania has historically for years ranked, you know, at the bottom, 48, 49, 50th in terms of uh, public employees as a, as a share of um, uh, per capita, public employees per capita. We are not an overloaded state. We're an efficient state. Um, our public employees contribute, a, frankly, a great deal to their pension costs more than they do in a number of other states. Um, there's something else I wanted to say about that, but I can't. Oh, general government. We, we're we're going to do. <coughs> we've done a sort of preliminary analysis of the GGO, the General Government Operations Line, and the governor's talked about wanting to reduce the size of government. He wants to cut, cut administration by 10 percent. You cut that line, which is where most of the public employees are, it's $95 million if you cut it by 10%. So um, that line is about 4.3% of the entire budget. So we're talking about 4 or 5%, 6% of the budget is in administration like that. You can, don't take this the wrong way. You could cut everyone out. It wouldn't have to make an appreciable difference. You could, cut the, you could cut the entire legislature out. Every single person who works for the legislature, the legislature would not make an appreciable difference. Again, it's important that there are economies and shared sacrifice in all of those areas, but that's not what's driving the cost. What's driving the cost is all of these services go out to local communities and they help make our lives 